Well, it's Sunday now. Uh, I did my videos yesterday. My eye was bothering me because they put drops in it and it's dilated. Um, they said it was, anyway, the doctor said it wasn't a big deal. It just needs to be treated and, uh, drops can be, it can be treated, treated with drops over the next week. And, uh, same thing I had in, uh, in Australia and, um, the doctor said it's very common. Um, they didn't really know what would cause it. it sounds to me, I'm not a doctor, maybe I'm wrong, but it sounded to me like it was, um, he said your, your eye thinks that it's got an infection or something. It's, it's an immune thing. Um, it, it, anyway, hell do I know it's fixed. It's on its way to being fixed. He wasn't too concerned with it. So that's good. Obviously I went, I went to the hospital rather than wait till Monday one, because I needed drops. Uh, and two, I wanted to make sure it was a little disturbing, obviously that it came back, right? One thing, if something happens, that's fine. But the problem was I treat, I thought I was treating it with these drops and then a week later it came back again. Obviously that's not treating it. That's masking what I would consider a problem. And I wanted to make sure that it was all right. No big deal. Uh, this is some sort of technical term and it's very common, I guess. So fixed now, uh, or not fixed now, but on its way to being fixed. So we're si I'm sitting here with Adeline who's sleeping a little bit. Uh, and Amy and the kids are in at a play place here. Uh, in Guelph, uh, ripping and tearing around. Um, it was Ava's birthday party this weekend, but a bunch of kids were away. So, uh, we decided not to have the birthday party. Um, it's March break, right? In hindsight, probably not a good time to have a birthday party when all the kids are, are away and going away anyway. So, uh, Amy said, you know, let's go to the water park. So there's a giant water park. Uh, stop doing that. There's a giant water park in uh, in Pennsylvania. I don't know if there's a bunch of them around. It doesn't matter. It's a massive water park, Great Wolf Lodge, and there's another one right in Niagara Falls. Two big water parks. But the problem is, it's March break. Every kid on Earth, or at least in the vicinity of Ontario, will be at that water park. So I have no interest in going there. And I remembered the hotel right behind our place. If you've ever been to Guelph, if you ever came for the, the open house or, or anything like that, uh, right behind our house, literally two minutes away, there's a nice hotel, and it has a water slide and a pool. So I said to Amy, why don't we, why don't we go stay in the hotel and, um, you know, let the kids go in the pool. And we did. There was a lot of kids there, too, but whatever. It was fun. Um, today, we took them to the, the place to play and relax, and uh, I figured I'd finish up my videos. Now, my earlier videos, this doesn't matter to you now, but my earlier videos are loading, uh, have almost loaded so we should be able to have this out to you Monday, I hope. We'll run through the barns. Uh, Jason's barns actually got a ton going on, and Jason has a lot going on. We have the we have West 52nd, Oso Pine, uh, Twinsburg, CU in Tuscany, and yes, all ready to qualify. We're going to give them another week. I'm going to school them all in 58 or 59 on Thursday, and then we'll qualify them the following Thursday. The James Hackett Memorial is coming up for those five, and then hopefully for them after that will be the Scarlet and Gold. And if, um, I guess it's further down the line, the sire stakes start a few weeks after that. And then um, if they're good enough, if it looks like the three trotters anyway are good enough, there's obviously the Beal coming up for them. Um, I'm going to keep a close eye on, on how our stakes shake down this year. First year we didn't stake to anything. The first year the stables open was really, you know, held together with bubble gum and dreams. Uh, the second year we had a, a bit of a business model, I guess, for the staking. And, but we didn't utilize a lot of those uh, grand circuit stakes. Now, what do we do with those? What do we do with them? I said in the other videos, um, I said in the other videos uh, earlier starting out that um, um, it's important that we have them to sell the horses and have the horses available to race in them. But we're going to keep an eye on them and see how, they, how, how things progress. Uh, always looking for a better way to uh, to do business. Obviously, we're learning as we go, uh, and you're a big part of that. And also, we are going to have that, uh, I'd like to have that webcast next month. I would say maybe like, without having the calendar in front of me, I'd say like April 5th, 6th, or earlier, a little bit later, give or take, so that we have enough time to discuss that last junket of stake payments and... Um, the last junket of stake payments 
and also things going on in the barn. So let's get right into it here. We'll start with Jason's barn. We'll start with it. So usually we start with Kevin's, so we'll start with Jason's. Our Vicar raced last night. Now it's good that we're doing this video today. Our Vicar raced last night. I didn't know how she'd race. I wanted to race her from off the pace, but I looked left halfway down the lane. She was trotting pretty good. A couple of horses off the gate. The speed on the inside of me did not look like it had much speed that night. The track was a little deep. I let her scream out of there. She crossed right over in front. I'm thinking to myself, might be the best in here tonight. That's good. She's going to race good. We got to the half. Still thinking uh, I got a good breather. 31 seconds, 31 and a bit. Uh, the favorite came to me down the back stretch. He cleared me in the last turn. And our Vicka was a little bit faded. Finished fifth, trotted in 2, 3, and 3. Last half, 102. Last quarter, 31. It was a bad track and kind of a windy night, but whatever. A uh, little displeased with the race. Happy she stayed at it. You know, I could, I could see that we could get those wrinkles out of that filly, that hikiness in the turn. Her feet were probably a little bit sore given the weather. We just shot her. just got the corks off her. Her knees probably, you know, have never been looked at since last year. Probably could do those. Uh, lower hawks usually start to bother these three-year-olds this time of year. When you see them hiking and rolling in the turns, everybody thinks stifle, stifle. It's rarely the stifle. It's usually the lower hawk, sometimes the upper hawk, and sometimes an ankle. But uh, in her case, I've seen this before. I would think her lower hawks, probably a little tight, a little pinchy, could probably use doing. So uh, as I'm pulling up, all this is going through my head. Why'd she fade? Why She was rocky. You know, the race is replaying over my head, over my head. And... Um, uh, we come off, and I said, Jason, I said, you know, I probably should get that Philly scoped, eh? He said, yeah, yeah, we'll get her scoped. Um, and I said, you know, I don't want to say we should change shoes and do this. I think she needs a little bit of vet work done. Overall, I was, I guess, okay with the race, but a little disheartened. I mean, this is a Philly we'd high hopes for. So, And this is a, a, a movie that keeps playing right now this time of year. Dancing on my own, expensive horse, gone. Uh, quartz blue chip, expensive horse, gone. I mean, we can't control who comes, who goes, who stays, who makes money, who doesn't. But it's a, it obviously is a little disheartening. So uh, Jason calls me an hour later. Philly's full of blood. I said, what do you mean? She bled. She had some redness in her throat, pimples, same as lots of horses would, a little bit of mucus. Two and a half, three out of five for blood. That's a significant amount of blood, for especially for a, a filly that's supposed to be fresh. So uh, now the brakes go on. She was strong starting in the back stretch. She felt like a winner. She fizzled out like a bleeder. I would probably argue, had she not bled, she would have jogged, given the factoring in this this new information of bleeding, and it's significant. That's a that's a very treatable but significant amount of blood for a young horse. So uh, obviously with the Lasex program. So uh, now I'm I'm gonna switch gears. I think we can get the wrinkles out of her, and if we can get the wrinkles out of her, and you know, this bleeding's been bothering her in various forms for quite a while. I doubt it just showed up this week. We've scoped our Vicka before, but if you scope a horse after the race and there's a little bit of blood, there's a little bit of mucus and redness and infl inflammation and you see a few specks of blood there, you're like, oh, well, one's because of the other. Two and a half, three out of five, that's significant. So it's treatable though. So uh, I'll switch gears. I went from, ah, she was okay. I was okay with the mile to, I'm very happy with the mile because I'm certain we can get those little, that bump out of her in the turns. And she was strong getting into the last turn and raced like a bleeder because she bled. So I was very happy with our Vickers race. I would say uh, she has to be 14 days now to get on the Lasex program. So that means she can't race until uh, two weeks today or even Monday maybe, depending on what they is it 15 clear days or 14? It might be the Monday. Her next state, state her next race might be in uh, in Mohawk. So I was very happy with her, Vic. And now looking back on it, one, she behaved herself at the gate. Two, she screamed off the car, never put a step in. She got a little bumpy. I shouldn't say that, but blew right through the turn. No problems. Never offered to make a break. She might have looked uh, dangerously close to running to you, but as the driver, there was never a, a, a scary moment where I said, "Ooh," and you're lost, or "Ooh," she might, she might, you know, she might run. Never ever, uh, never ever uh, bothered, uh, bothered me. So um, our Vicka uh, went from crap to you know like ah, I wish she had been better. You know that's kind of shitty race to oh well that's why it was a shitty race and I think she's going to be uh, she'll be just fine. So keep in mind this is only a filly two three starts into her three year old season. She's not tight. She's not sharp. Um, especially with the schedule at the firm 
and in this region with uh, missing days, missing races, races canceled. Um, I think our Vika last night, looking back at it now, factoring in that, that significant amount of blood, very happy with the trip she went, and I can only assume she'll be much better for it. So that's uh, our Vika, Bay Jewel. Two starts ago, I'm watching from Australia. I thought she raced awesome. Finished sixth, still 29, 50, er, uh, 59, 29, 30 on the end of it. I thought she looked good. And then come right back last week with a horrible mile. I don't know what the hell went on with her. Now, we did uh, we did scope her. She wasn't bad. Maybe we should draw blood on her to make sure. Now, her race was canceled uh, the other night. She had the 10 hole, so whatever. Uh, it was going to be a lost cause anyway. So um, she'll be in to go. We didn't want to race Bay Jewel in the Maiden at Mohawk. I wanted to race Screaming Hawk. I was driving Screaming Hawk. But uh, it just didn't work out for Bay Jewel. So hopefully we can get Bay Jewel in London on Friday. It would be a better place, I think, to race her. Um, you know, obviously, she's a bit of a letdown. This is a filly that I thought right up until... This isn't a filly we paid a lot of money for, and I thought she was going to be great. This is a filly that trained downgrade. This is a filly I thought very highly of. Even when I centered Indiana, I thought we were going to do good things with Bay Jewel. And she's really let me down, to be honest. One of the few horses, you know, even with our Vicka, I liked her. I knew she maybe had to mature. She had that one win. We turned her up, brought her back. It's not like we paid her into the Hamiltonian Oaks. I thought she was going to be a decent filly, and she may be. Bay Jewel, I really thought was going to be a nice horse and has really let me down. And um, hopefully we can get her back on the on a, some, 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 back on a path forward. Uh, it looked like two starts ago she was starting down that path and then uh, obviously some significant regression last week with a break but leading up to that break she was a, a non-factor so we'll see we'll see what takes place with Bay Jewel in the coming weeks Boston Glide's back going now looking good that uh, that area that he that he injured filled in perfectly uh, it looks great on ultrasound so we're going to start going with him when Jason leaves I had an interesting phone call, an interesting conversation. One of our clients the other day was a partner on Boston Glide with me, and he said, why don't we send him to Pennsylvania when, when you send the babies down? Probably a great idea. You know, there's not a lot of races here. Like, let's be honest, Bay, uh, Boston Glide has to trot 56, 55 to be competitive where we need him to be. I just don't know if he can right away. That doesn't mean he won't ever. I don't think he's a slow horse, but I think he's a slow maturing horse physically. So I think that Boston Glide is uh, is a horse maybe we will take with us to Pennsylvania. He can race where we'll be stationed in Pennsylvania. And we'll talk about this maybe on the webcast. I'll have some more information for you. Very close to uh, uh, partnering with a trainer here that is going to go to Pennsylvania, I believe. So um, where we're going to be stationed will be an hour from the Poconos, uh, an hour and a bit from the Poconos, an hour and a bit from Philadelphia, two key tracks with a lot of classes for trotters. So maybe Boston Glide will be taking uh, taking the trip down to Pennsylvania also. Casanova's Jewel, I schooled Casanova's Jewel in 2-5 the other day. I thought he was tremendous. I'm gonna school, I didn't school him, I trained him. They canceled schoolers the other day, as you guys, obviously you guys knew that. So we trained all these horses uh, at Mohawk. Casanova's Jewel was extremely strong, trained very, very well. Um, I'm going to school him in 58 or 59 on Thursday. Very happy with what I've seen from this horse so far. Very, very happy. Dance Hall Babe trained in 212. Still a little bumpy in the turns. If you guys have watched her train at our track or uh, watched her going slow miles, she has a little hike to her, a little bump to her. Once you let her stretch out, she's fine. Um, made a few little shoeing adjustments on her. I watched her train the other day. I wasn't happy with what I saw, but I was happy when I went with her. So I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll sweep that one away, just because I went fast with it at the farm. I went around 212 in the jog cart. Um, I think she's probably ready to start going around 28, 212. Probably a month away from the track still, but she's getting there and looks good. Uh, I don't know. I know she grew up a little bit. Looks a little more physically and mentally matured. But uh, to what extent? I'm not really sure yet. I'll let you know in the next three weeks. Ivanka is getting close to being ready. She's going to train probably in. 2-2, two, 2-3. Two, two, She's two weeks from schooling, I would say. Uh, I know Alan and a, and a couple of our clients like, how long, how long? This can change. Ivanka should have been qualified by now, but she went through a spell of three weeks where she was horrible. She was on a line. She was weak. Uh, and this is, she's done this before. We put her on Regimate. I thought she was horsing a little bit. I watched her train the other day. She was not on the line. She was not weak. They went a mile and a half with her last half and seven in the jog cart. It's a pretty good mile. In the, in the way she come off the track too. Not, and it, we talk about this all the time. It isn't how they train all the time. It's how they act after they train. Ate her lunch, seemed good. 
she was coming off her feet a little bit, just gone through a bad spell for about three weeks, but now seems really, really good. So Ivanka's getting really close. Oh, so Pine trained in 2-4 the other day. He's getting very, very close. Probably going to school him in 59, uh, 58, 59 on Thursday. All these Ohio horses are there. They're ready to go. Uh, but I said to Jason, let's go with one more school. Let's not rush. I'm not rushing for the Hackett. You know, these are our stake horses. So let's get them ready right now and do it right. And if they don't school 110% on Thursday, like if they're not ready to go right now, they may school again the week after. So, uh, or at least a, a slower qualifier. So Oh So Pine looked very, very good the other day. Mystical Mission, uh, a decent third. I thought he probably should have won, but that's been his kind of uh, modus operandi the last little while was, was uh, you know, kind of get there. Look okay. And I expect more. This is a horse that over the last year, now when we got him, was a killer. Like this horse, luckily, he was destined to head to the open and then kind of slid a little bit. Um, he's coming back. He, I, I thought he should have won the other night. But listen, coming off a break, I was a little careful with him. I hit him a swat halfway down the lane. He might have reached. He might not have, but he might have. But he was third and raced well. So he's back in to go tomorrow. Middle of the gate, I think, probably in the same class. Not an angel. Had that curb cry out. I believe it was cry out last week. I don't want to say it was, but we had a clear path uh, between Jason. Jason and I talked about it and then looped in the vet. The vet talked to both of us about it. Uh, they had a clear cognitive path of what they were going to do. I believe that curb was crowd. Uh, I don't want to speak out of turn because I don't know positively it was. I believe it was. Once it's crowd, I would suspect it looks really, really good right now. Once it's crowd, you're looking at five days to start right back with it. Missed a little time, but we have time. Not a big deal. Not an angel will be better for it. Pay the line. Blue Chip continues to race good. Oh, the poor girl went all the way over there. Like, I don't know what Flamborough was doing. At Mohawk canceled at 3 o'clock. Like, it hit, the, the temperature exploded upward. You know, it went from minus 2 to, like, plus 7. There was no way they were going to race. But they've pulled off the first two races and then canceled. Maybe even the first three. We were in the 4th, 5th, and 10th. So, uh, Pay the Line Blue Chip didn't end up getting ready to race. Getting to race. She'll be in to go next week. See you in Tuscany. Train great. If those of you are on Facebook, go on my Facebook page. Jason had had a video of those two horses just finishing up by uh, by the phone uh, and posted it on Facebook. And I reshare. I'd shared it on my Facebook page. I believe the stable did also. So uh, you can see see you in Tuscany finishing up with Twinsburg. Both of them starting to look real, real good also. They're going to come back on Thursday. Short notice, about five days, but neither of them were stretched out. They went a mile in two, three. Uh, but they've been ready to go. So I would suspect they'll be good again on Thursday. Thursday will be a good test. I want to see what CU and Tuscany is going to look like. Back five days training hard. I want to keep an eye on this. This is a horse last year. You know, everybody saw he was weak at the end of the year. But for love of God, he almost died in January. You know, he was sick, sick, sick. Two, three times throughout his training down to the races. The fact that he was as good as he was when he got there was pretty, pretty incredible. Almost miraculous. And then... Again, race good like four times, trickle of blood. We put him on Lazex. He was really flat at the end of the year, and uh, he was put away flat. So looks great training down, but and hasn't had any sickness issues, which is fantastic. I want to see how this guy looks after he comes back in five days with another big mile. I want to see how he eats his lunch. I want to see how his temperature is, how he feels after the training trip. I would love nothing more than to see him bounce around the stall, rip the bucket off the wall, and, and be sharp. That would be a very, very good sign for us uh, and CU in Tuscany. Stonebridge Simba, about two, three weeks behind the, the CU in Tuscany group. He came in a little bit later. Uh, probably put him in the bike and go a mile in 210, 28, somewhere next week. Uh, he's getting close. The way we had staked Simba, uh, I want to have him. Now he fits in Elmer's at two, which is awesome, around Mohawk. We're having him ready for the Pennsylvania Sires. But I want to have his stake races. We have like four, a big, a big chunk of stakes for him later at the year, the Liberty Bell, Keystone uh, Classic, I think. the uh, There's like four or five of them uh, all stretched after the Pennsylvania Sire. So I think we have him staked perfectly. Um, very, very happy with where we have Stonebridge Simba. Stonebridge Loyal, uh, been a little flat the last little while. And we had her her, her ankle shockwaved. And you're allowed to. I know most of you are going to say, oh, you can't do that. No, we, we can't do that. The vet can. A little costly. It's about 400 bucks to shock her front ankles. Her ankles are the problem. Now that we have her going and getting a good look at her, she's got very odd ankles. She has some arthritis in both of them. And you can see it. The oscillates. If you're horsemen out there, you know what I'm talking about. Those oscillates. 
Um, and I can I can tell you a little more about what oscillates are. You don't see them that often in horses this day and age. Uh, back when I was a kid, lots of horses had them, but not this day and age. And it's uh, calcium and, and arthritis in their ankles. And um, they bother her. They bother her quite a bit, but we've been treating them. And uh, it's not... Uh, we try to be as frugal as we can, but have to treat those ankles. You can see what they're, they just started to bother her a little more. And you can see it. You can see it on the program. You don't have to ask me when they start to hurt her. Pick up the program. Two starts ago, they started to hurt her again. So they've always hurt her in some degree. I think the shift in the weather, the thing about oscillates are the shift in the track. If the track's always hard, they'll learn to go. The track's always soft, they'll learn to go. When you have those patches of hard and soft spots on the track and those deep tracks, it's tough for the adjustments for the horses and tough for Stonebridge Loyal. So I suspect her next start will be better. We now have the corks off her. Her ankles were shocked. We can work on them a little more. I think you'll see a better Stonebridge Loyal in her next start. Twinsburg, again, we can talk about the last three as we always do because they're always on the same place. Twinsburg, West 52nd, and yes, all ready to go. I would say if you asked who trained the best of the last little while, West 52nd trained in 2-2, come out in 58 the other day, and he looked like a beast. I'm really curious to see what's going to take place with this horse. Uh, yes, look great. 2-3, last half 59. And Twinsburg look good. Again, go to my Facebook page and you can see Twinsburg's mile. That's Jason's barn. A lot going on here. And there'll be quite a shift when Jason leaves. Uh, there'll be quite a shift. And we have some other big news. We have another trainer that's interested in coming up. An older gentleman, that, that uh, a great horseman. I have a great story with this guy. Um... Uh, We'll tell it properly. We're not going to tell it today, but just uh, how you might know him. Probably broke and trained down one of the best horses to look through a bridle in Canada. A um, uh, foundation sire, and nobody knows that this gentleman had this horse because he wasn't the guy who was known with him. But uh, anyway, it's a story for next week. I'm going to give you a little cliffhanger. So that's a long, I'm going to draw, I drew out the stables this week. I drew out the babies because we didn't have a lot to talk about because the racing was canceled. 22 minutes we spent on Jason. I'll be back in a minute with Harry's burn and then again with Kevin's burn. And we'll call this puppy a day and get to training and jogging this week. Beautiful day here in Guelph. Plus five in the sun. It's supposed to be beautiful all week. Summer's coming. I'm back with Harry's Burn. We talked about Jason's Burn. We got a lot going on. Harry's Burn's got a lot going on too. Now, um, every week the last little while, I have a tough time finding where to put Jared Bothwell. So I'm going to loop limp. I'm going to put him and Harry together. Jared Bothwell is a trainer of ours. He has two horses up at first line. Joe Stutzman's Burn. The reason he has them, they're swimming. Sally Devee swimming. Race was canceled the other night. Very not very happy about that. When I drove her, she was awesome that night. I think if I move her out of the two hole, I'm first or second. But she was a very strong third. I've never seen Sally DeVee as sound as she is now. And a sound Sally DeVee can be any kind of Sally DeVee. So I think we're going to see the very best races of Sally DeVee coming soon. So there's that. And now Lima's son is up there. He didn't... I don't want to use the word injure. I don't know if he injured his right hind leg. It blew up a little bit. But here's my thinking on it. Now, it could be easy. There could be a little tear there. That could be a, a nightmare. That could be a real problem. But what I think it was, was remember back when he was diagnosed to begin with that right hind leg, he had those little micro tears all through the suspensory. It was bad. It was bad. I only kept him because we, one, I love the horse and two, I have the utmost respect for him. He's tough. So we kept him. We had him off almost a year, got him ready, gave him all the time in the world, got him ready, schooled him in two, two. He looked awesome. And then his leg blew up again. That right high in the outside branch of the suspensory. So we ultrasounded it. No tears. No holes. No nothing. Just swelling. So what I think happened was that suspensory was filled in. So back it up just a second. When they tear those suspensories like this. And this is why the re-injury rate on horses, especially trotters behind, is high when it comes to suspensories. That ligament, when it tears, when it gets a hole in it or a, or a lesion in it. It fills in with scar tissue, right? That's why we inject it sometimes. We the vet inject it with uh, um, enzymes and platelets because we want tissue to grow back. Uh, but what happens is scar tissue is what grows in a lot of those. So I think uh, Lima Sun had a lot of scar tissue there. And when we really stretched them and you stretched that ligament out, which is like an elastic, it didn't have the same give that it would have. So I think it's as much irritation 
as it is, as it is re-injury. I'd stop short of calling it a re-injury. So uh, he's swimming right now. It is a little big. Um, and the vet is going to look at him tomorrow. And she's going to have... This is the vet that originally diagnosed him and looked at him and looked at him. She's going she's gonna to look at him tomorrow. She's going to give us an honest opinion of what she believes. Uh, it might need crowd. If it needs crowd a couple of weeks, it might need shocked. It might need time. I hope there's not a tear in there now. The only problem is sometimes when you have that swelling, you can't see that tear uh, clear or a hole clear um, on an ultrasound. So there is that concern in the back of my mind also. So, well, I guess we're starting off with Jared Bothwell's barn. And Jared Bothwell's barn has two horses in it of ours. Sally DeVee looks awesome right now. Jared's done a tremendous job with that filly. And Lima's son who I'm going to hold my breath till tomorrow afternoon um, because nobody cheers for him more than me. I love this horse and I hope he, uh, I hope Ed, the prognosis is okay. The vet's not going to come back and say, hey, don't worry about it. It's a problem. He's got a hind leg that's reactive. Uh, there's some swelling there that has to come out before we think about pushing forward. So best case scenario, he may have a crack in his splint bone, which sounds terrible. I would settle for that all day long. Just go to the vet. They take it out, operate, take it out. It's about a thousand bucks. And then you're back going in two weeks without any, stop phone, will you please? Without any, uh, without any issues with the ligament. No, no, uh, yeah, there may have been some reaction from that bone. That would be great. From that bone, there's some reaction, uh, but not the ligament itself. That would be fantastic, but might be, a, might be a stretch also. So we'll see tomorrow. Jared's done a great job with these two horses. He only had Lima swimming for a week and a half. Harry did a fantastic job getting in the races, and Jared has him now. So I guess that's Jared's burn. I guess Curtis can put it up as Jared's burn. I'll be right back in a second. We'll get into Harry's burn then. We're back now. We did uh, Jared Bothwell's barn. He's only got two horses for us, but uh, worth mentioning. He's doing a great job, and uh, one of them keeping a very, very close eye on with Lima's son. Uh, so we get into Harry's barn. Harry's burn. First up is final answer. We had a bunch sold. Uh, now we go to final answer. Now final answer. A lot of people were looking to buy sell shares of final answer and dump them. The final answer is going to recover. He did not have a lesion or a tear. He had a hole in his suspensory. I think was there for a very very long time. Always had that head nod left front, but there was no swelling. The reason there was no swelling is because it was in a place that the rest of his ligaments, bones, and structure of his leg could protect it. You'd never know it was there until we searched. So we did a thorough search and found a little hole in his uh, left front suspensory. We injected it with the enzymes, the platelets I was telling you about. And I saw him jog the other day. Look looked great. He's been jogging. Looking good. Um, he'll start training when he's ready. Uh, I'll have the vet re-ultrasound that. And when he tells me, hey, you're good to go, then he'll be going. Final answer is obviously a bit behind everybody. He's going to be ready closer to the summer. But final answer's got a lot of talent. He's a war horse. He's a race horse. And he'll be just fine. <laughs> Just a tad. Greg was here the other day, and I can't apologize enough to, to Eric D'Souza, Greg Schoner, and um, and Mark Treffy and his wife for coming. They love coming here to watch the horses. Didn't even get to watch a horse because of the weather. So that sucks, but Greg and I got to talk about Just a Tad. Greg and I own Just a Tad together. Um, just a Tad qualified, but he will not be error-free uh, for the rest of his life, I don't think. It's going to take, you got to know him. So either I'm going to take him to the half mile track and hope that he can get around. Greg said to me, he goes, can he get around a half? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea if he can. He gets around our track, but we never trained him fast at the farm before. Can he get around a half? I have no idea. But we're going to find out soon enough. And I think uh, just a tad, he's a powerhouse. So if you look at his qualifier the other day, they gave the track three seconds and they could have easily given it three or four. It was horrible. He went a mile two, three, last half in a minute and looked good. James said he had a bow in his neck the whole way. He said, you know, I'm holding my breath and holding on to him as tight as I can so he doesn't run, which is weird because he doesn't seem to have that much lameness, issue, that, that many lameness issues. Uh, his issue that if you if you fluoroscoped him, if you x-rayed him, he's got a, a chip in his right hind ankle. Lots of horses have had them and now take, Muscle Hill had OCDs in both his ankles and never had them taken out. Now, we were prepared to take it out. It wasn't bothering him, so we didn't. He didn't want to poke the bear. And um, I don't think it is bothering him. I think there's a number of things bothering just a tad. And that ankle's not one of them. 
So I don't, I should say there's a number of things. I have no idea. I mean, there's lots of horses with issues. He's not one of them. So he's just going to have to find his way. The good news is, why, why does his phone do this? I wonder. Uh, the good news is, is, um, uh, just a tad's a very, very strong colt. If you remember back last year, he was one of our best colts. He's still strong, very strong. And I think if we can keep him trotting and get some confidence under him, he could be any kind of horse. You hear me say that sometimes, but in this case, I think you understand what I'm talking about. Just a tad could be a very, very nice horse. Just going to take time. So, you know, now that Road Tripper's racing good, Greg, I can give you that to look at. You know, just a tad has lots of talent. And I guess at this point, we're in for a penny, in for a pound. I am anyway. I own 98% of them. He's staying for quite a while. And um, I'm going to stay until he proves he doesn't want to be a racehorse. And he has not proved that. He's tried. I can say he's made breaks. I mean, maybe he's made, maybe he's trying his hardest not to make a break. You ever think of that? So just a tad safe for now um, because I think he can do some good. I think he's much, much better than any of the B-Track maidens that are racing right now. Can we get him around a B-Track though? I don't know. We're going to find out. So just a tad. Lawmakers back jogging. No rush with this guy. He's going to be ready about four weeks before his first stake race. That's what I said to Harry. I said, I'll go home and take a look at his first stake race. I don't think it's till July or, or late June. Uh, four weeks before then, that's when lawmakers going to be ready. We gave him lots and lots and lots of time. This jump into the four-year-old season, this is not just the deep end of the pool. This is the deep end of the pool with sharks and piranhas in it. Just, we're not chasing these better horses. I'm not going to ruin our four-year-olds to prove that they're not as good as the six packs of the world and the other horses. And maybe he's retired now. I have no idea. But um, that transition from restricted three-year-old stakes to four-year-old open racing is tough. These horses are still maturing and now they need to learn to be very, very good horses. I've tried to hide him in cruising his style as best I could. I paid them into all the same stake races. And we're going to we're gonna have them racing all over the place. And they're in Massachusetts in one race uh, where I know there's probably a lot of horses going there. It's a quarter of a million dollar race. But it's a quarter of a million dollar race on a five-eighths mile track that's in the middle of, like, in the middle of nowhere. It's off the beaten path, way off the beaten path. So uh, Lindy Farms is down the road. They're going to have some good horses there. Some other people might. But we're going to have Lawmaker and Cruising in style there also. I think it's called the Spirit of Massachusetts or something. Anyway, um, we'll see what happens. There are some stakes, but I did not pay them into the Breeders' Crown or the big race on Hambo Day, the, the Cashman. I didn't pay them into these races where everybody's going to be. I want to let our four-year-olds become good horses. Lawmaker and Cruising and Style have been pillars of this stable from day one. That doesn't mean we won't ever sell them, but I'm not going to throw them to the wolves. I want them to turn into the horses that they can be, and we can allow them to do that now. So that's exactly what we're going to do. The four-year-old season of Lawmaker and Cruising in Style, although still very lucrative, or the potential of being very lucrative, is not going to butt head. We're not going to butt heads with the five and six-year-olds that trot them 49 and 50, 51 uh, all summer long. Thanks anyway. We'll see you when we're five. Um, Lincoln James. Lincoln James, I said to James last night, you know, Lincoln James not the type of horse to get away ninth and come flying on the end of it, but that's exactly what I asked James to do. He got torched a couple of times, and I talked to Travis, and Travis was apologetic and said, hey, you know, I know uh, I didn't want to leave him out of the seven hole. He was really hot at the gate. I didn't want to shut his air off, and he ended up on the front, and he just, it, you know, and I'm glad he said that to me because I was a little angry about it, but um, that's racing. You know, I've been on the other end of that where I'm the guy on the front end with the horse at the seven hole. So I got to kind of bite my tongue sometimes when I say stuff because there isn't, there isn't a mistake any of these drivers aren't going to make that I haven't made multiple times, dozens, hundreds of times in my life. So Lincoln James needed an easy race. He was in at Mohawk. They said to James, you know, just he can get a little bully. Don't slam his head right up onto the gate because it'd get really hot. Just get him away. He come closing on the end of it. I think if he had a finished off that freight train like move, he's a winner. But go look, go look at the lines from that night. There's no quarters in 27 seconds for the most part that night. Really windy, big headwind that night. And I think that uh, Lincoln James did all he could. James drove him very good, did exactly what he was asked to do. And I think he will bounce back better for it. So a sixth, no money, but exactly where we need to be with Lincoln James heading into next week's racing. Maintenance man trained good last week. You can tell Harry's got a ton of miles into this horse, but he doesn't have a ton of speed into him. 
Uh, I'm going to train him again, 2-3. I'm going to come out 56 or 57 with him this week and light him up. I want him, uh, want some speed. And, and this is the thing, you know, when you deal, and, and there's nothing wrong with this. Don't get me wrong. This isn't a slight. Um, some of the older horsemen, they'll put lots and lots of miles into them. Speed, no speed. No quarters in 27, 28, 29. Then you go to jump on them. The first time, couple of times you ask for it, you can see they're trying, but they're just not getting to it. And um, that's how he was the other day, maintenance man. Now, this is a colt that I know, you know, I won a 53 with him twice on the front end. I think I definitely did it, Georgian. Maybe Brett won the other time, I'm not sure. But uh, this horse got tons of speed, quick speed. So the fact it didn't disappear, it's just dormant. Just dormant for the winter like a big bear. It's springtime now and it'll be coming out in the next couple of weeks. But he trained very, very good the other day. Maxwell Plum trained good. He's going to continue to train. I know I told everybody when he first injured his knee, I'm like, ah, a few weeks will be fine. That's been like five weeks ago. Yeah, this has been a problem. It's now fixed. The knee's filled in good. We changed the shoes so he doesn't get into his knee. It looks like we made some good choices with the shoeing change. He's not coming near his knee now. But now he's learning to trot in a totally different way. Uh, in a totally different way. And that's created a few challenges, let's say. But I was happy with what I saw the other day. Going to train him hard again this week and then get a good look at how Maxwell Plum looks. He's probably a week from qualifying, maybe two. But he needs to go another mile, 2-4, two, 2-5, two, uh, and do it right this week, which I assume he will. Screaming Hawk, qualified great, was in to go. I was all pumped, ready to rock. And then it started to rain and the, and the, bra, the, the, the temperature come up. And the races were canceled. So he's probably going to have to be entered in for Thursday. And likely, he should have went and trained on Saturday. Uh, he'll likely go over Monday. We'll probably train him in the bike. Maybe go a mile in 210 on Monday, which would be three days out of the race. But we certainly can't go without training that horse. Sunshine's Finest getting closer. A little more careful with him. Putting a lot more muscle on him. He's eating good. He's looking good. Um, that horse will be ready to go on... Uh, I want to talk to Harry. I know he hasn't hit him over to Mohawk yet, so he probably hasn't been faster than 213, 212 at the firm. Probably going to go a mile in 26 with him this week, 27. He'll be ready soon enough. Sunshine in, a little flat the other day. Now, you saw the race I saw. She should have been first or second. She faltered. She didn't attack. She looked like she was going to, and she didn't. Now, that's like three times she's done that. Is she bleeding a little bit in the end of it? We did scope her. There was a couple of specks. I'm almost tempted to school her on Lasex, so that's something I want to talk to Harry about today. We'll either school her on Lasex, or we will um, race her in London next start and see how she is. It'll be one or the other. It won't be both. Um, and if she doesn't win handily in London, I would say regardless how she races in London, we'll scope her again. And if there's any blood at all, uh, she'll immediately go on Lasex at Philly. Um, she feels feels like she might be bleeding a bit she didn't finish that mile off the other night i was climbing all over james's wheel i ducked her to the inside she actually lost ground when it was all said and done and that's unacceptable um not really blaming her i know she got a lot of speed she could be a nice filly but i need to see that that uh you know that knockout punch coming so uh we'll defer this conversation a week race her in london probably i guess and then we'll see what goes on with her. The butler did it. Trained the butler did it. 2-8. Come half and 2 the other day. Going to train him again in 2-5. He's another one that had lots of muscle put on. But that speed has to bubble up. Uh, it's there. It'll come. So I'd say 2-4, 2-5 this week. I'd like to see 2-2 the week after that. Either in qualifying or schooling form. And then the butler did it. He is good to go. Was sound. Was sharp. Was not on line. Was trotting great. Very, very great job from Harry with the butler did it. Too far gone. Looked terrible the other day. That's like one, two, three, four breaks in a row. Uh, I'm going to turn her out for a month, and I'm going to bring her back. The reason I'm doing that is the sun, the sale in Ohio is in May. I'm going to turn her out. I'm going to bring her back. We're going to get her ready. If she's no better, even though she's a big filly, and I know she's going to mature, I know she's going to be a better horse down the road, but how much better? I don't know. So uh, if she doesn't come back good with a month layoff, uh, she'll probably find herself in the May sale. War We Ultra is getting closer. She's a few weeks behind. Uh, I trained her in 2.15 or something like that, uh, 10 days a week ago. Um, she's going to need about six or seven more heavy training trips before she polishes up really nice. She's getting there. She's getting there. So, uh, War We Ultra looking good. A uh, few little things. Got to change her shoes a little bit. You know, if you remember War We Ultra, she can get a little bumpy, a little scabby sometimes. But um, much, much better. And she is stronger, 
bigger, taller filly. She's coming back pretty good. White Tiger. He's been training and continues to train and will continue to train. He's a good month behind the Casanova's Jewels and the, the Ohio Colts. He didn't come in for a month behind them. He'll be ready a month after them. I'd say April 1st, um, April something. He'll probably only have one or two races before he heads to Pennsylvania. So that's it. That's Harry's Burn. A lot going on with Harry's Burn. I'm going to be back in a minute with Kevin's Burn. It's, no, it's not sleeping either. There's a lot going on there. Um, that's it. That's Harry's Burn. We'll be right back in a minute with Kevin's Burn. Well, we're punching through all the burns here. We get through Jason's burn. We get through Harry's burn. I'm going to start with Kevin's burn. American League is Indigo Tuesday. This horse had a scattered schedule, mostly because of the weather. Um, very happy with the way he was when I drove him. And then I think maybe Ryan made a little mistake with him last time he drove him. Then uh, because of the weather, he missed some time. Now he's back Indigo Tuesday. I think he was tight. He'll be one, two, three, I think. on. I think it's Tuesday. On Tuesday, very, very happy with what I've seen from American League. Art Seeker. Art Seeker. I don't know why Art Seeker didn't. Oh, Kevin wanted to give him a week off. He said, you know, even for a horse that, you know, has annoyed us for, for a couple of years now, uh, he is racing good and he is. So uh, let's keep it that way. He gave him a week off. He'll be in to go next week. Be my delight. We had given two and a half weeks off. She's going to be coming back in another two, three weeks. She'll be ready to go also. Um, hopefully going to be a steak filly this year. If not, there's lots of classes for Be My Delight. She's proved herself as a nice little filly and uh, certainly no complaints here. Better Call Mike. He didn't get in last week. He's going to be racing next week. Uh, better Call Mike's been racing better. I would have characterized him somewhere around mediocre, I think, uh, a few weeks ago, but he is making gains. I thought he raced well last start, and then the start I drove him before that, he, uh, he raced well again. Uh, and then who drove him? Maybe Robert, no, Alfie Carroll drove him the week before that. He raced good again. I would say three uh, pretty acceptable races in a row for Better Call Mike. So he's definitely gaining ground, um, progressing. I don't see any regression, and that's always a good thing. Book the bet, finally qualified. Finally qualified the other day. Looked great, too. She's put some weight on. This Philly last quarter in 27 and 4, and that slop was a huge last quarter. This Philly really is ready to rock, and uh, Kevin has her looking good. Buckingham. Buckingham's getting close also. My only concern with Buckingham, still a tiny, tiny bit light. Um, I want to, I'd like to see that weight put on her. Now, I didn't get a chance to talk to Kevin the other day, but uh, I don't have no interest in starting the race this filly when she's a little light. So maybe what we'll do now that she's ready to go, back her off a week, you know, pour the brand mash to her and, and you know, run lots of electrolytes into her. Just try and get her muscled up. It'd be great if we saw some nice grass start to sprout up and we could get her out in the field for a week. That also can play a big role sometimes. So Buckingham's ready to go and looks good, but I would like to see 40, 50 pounds put on this filly. That would be really helpful. Cruising with Angus, we keep talking about him because we don't have any reason not to. He's still at the farm. His leg looks great. He's not going to be doing anything for quite a while, but we're going to get that leg re-scanned. If it scans good, I might put him in the pool for a month just to make sure. This is when you see injuries take place like this. Uh, phone, you can end up on the sidewalk. Uh, when you see injuries take place like this that heal in perfectly, I, I would suspect that they weren't um, work-related injuries because you would think those strains would heal, would have, uh, would heal in with a lot of scar tissue. I would think as a layman, I'm not a vet, maybe I'm wrong, but I would think that um, those would heal in differently than the way his leg had healed in great, starting to look good. Um, and I know that the vet was impressed last time he scanned it. We'll scan it again, and then I think we'll put him in the pool for a month while cruising with Angus. But it looks like he's going to make a full recovery. Horse that definitely looks fantastic is cruising in style. Mark and Michelle Treffy were up on the weekend. They couldn't believe how much weight he put on. Remember, I've been telling you this since day one. If we could put weight and keep weight on cruising with style, you're going to see a different cruising with style. And I think that's exactly what we're going to see. A matured, physically mentally matured horse with a proper amount of weight on that is ready to go. I think that that's what you're going to see this year from cruising in style. Delcar Star Angel's back now. She's in Kevin's barn. Uh, Jason got a little tight for help and uh, Kevin had some horses leave so he just moved her over there. She's doing okay. Um, I had a conversation with one of our clients the other day like, you know, is she on her way out? Is she on her way in? I don't know. I mean, that'll be up to uh, Delcrest Star Angel. Let's just step back for a second. 
Delcrest Star Angel is a big, giant filly. She just turned three in, in January. Just turned three. And I know somebody's going to email me with her birth date, her actual date she was born. It's irrelevant. She just turned three regardless. And she's a big, giant filly. Her best days are ahead. She's already shown that she's intelligent enough to race. I think she'll be an, uh, an infinitely better horse without hobbles on. She tires because she has to put a lot of muscle on that frame and she hasn't put it all on yet. So she's going to take some time getting back. I'm going to give Kevin all the time in the world he needs to get her ready because she's got a lot to show us this filly. I need her to show us more. So I have every reason to believe she will. As she starts to pack muscle on that frame, as she starts to pack, pack all that power on that she needs, and hopefully we can get her there without the trot novels, I think you'll see a much different Delcrest Star Angel. Hard Eight. Hard Eight's getting very, very close also. I saw her train last week. She looked tremendous. Hard Eight's a big, strong filly. She could be any kind of filly. She's bred well. The sky's the limit for her, and whatever she wants to do, she will. And I have every reason to believe that she'll be a nice filly moving forward this year. Holden Steady. I don't think he's going to be a nice horse moving forward this year. This horse has proven that he's a condition claimer. I thought he was a good condition claimer at London until he got thumped the other night. This is a horse that we're probably going to race until we sell him. Uh, it's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. I think that was always a concern when we raced him last year. He looked good in that first stake and made all of his money in that first race for the most part. And then now he's kind of fizzled out and just kind of become common. So I think Holden Steady will be here until he's gone. And that's it with him. If you knew Susie, again, just beats around the condition claimer class, hopefully paying her bills and doing okay. Now that the corks are off, we'll get a better look at her. But Susie is Susie. She's okay. But uh, I'd like to see a better horse owned by Daryl in the barn. That's for sure. I'd love to see, you know, Daryl's been a good owner for us. And I would like to see a, uh, you know, a, a 20, 30, $40,000 claimer on there for him. But uh, Susie is not going to achieve that stature, I don't think. Right now, she's in limbo where she could be a better horse. And we're hoping she will be in the near future. Master Savers back going. He had a nasty quarter crack that really bothered him. Somebody who bought into him and asked me, hey, is he all right? He was all right. And he still is all right. But he did have a quarter crack. Um, Kevin will probably train him this week. I would say he won't race this week. He'll race the week after, I would suspect. Road Tripper was awesome again the other night. Now, you can tell Road Tripper's getting a little more confidence in him and a little more um, soundness. Uh, he's getting sounder because James actually left him the other night. I know the quarter wasn't fast, but the track was horrible. It was windy as hell, and he ended up on the front. Not really Road Tripper's, even James will admit, not really Road Tripper's race, but he got beat by horses that are worth a lot of money, like pretty good money, and only just got beat at the wire by them. And I think Road Tripper will, uh, you know, every week this horse gets better and more confident. I think next week, if he gets away close and hunts the way he likes to, it's going to take a good horse in that class to beat him. Very, very happy with Road Tripper. Then we got the two Tulo, uh, Time All horses, Houdini and Tulo. I missed uh, Tulo's first part. I saw the end of the mile the other day. He looked good. I don't think he looked as good as Houdini, but he looked very, very good. Both these horses are coming back great. Time All Houdini looked. You know we're having a long day with the videos when the temperature shuts my phone down. I guess the sun's beating down on it. Anyway, I didn't get to tell you about the Time All horses. So, Time All Houdini has been training fantastic. Looked great again last week. Tulo's kind of following in behind, and he's got some work to do, but they're both looking very, very good. Not to say that Tulo's not as good as Houdini. They both raced great last year. Um, I just got a chance to look at Time All Houdini without the hobbles on. This horse looks really, really good. And Time All uh, Tulo hasn't been wearing the hobbles, but he'll wear the hobbles. And I think once he gets that security, that little security blanket of the hobbles on him, you'll see him bounce forward also. So that's both the Time All horses. That's Kevin's barn. That's all the, that's all the barns. Um, that's it for this weekend. So not a lot went on. Not a lot of horses training, but uh, a lot of work going on. So... We'll be back next Saturday. There will be a drone. The Mother's Day open house is May 12th. For those of you trying to plan your trips, I was surprised how many people have been emailing me saying, I want to book my flights. I want to book my flights. When's the open house? That's awesome. That's great. I'm always surprised the amount of people that want to come to the open house on, on Mother's Day. Uh, it makes me feel great, obviously, but it's a feather in the cap of the stable and fractional ownership groups all, all around. Uh, just to show... The, the outpouring of interest and uh, enthusiasm when it comes to, um, you know, fractional ownership. Anyway, that's, uh, that's it for this week. We'll be back again, like I said, with the drone on Saturday, and I'll probably have some updates for you throughout the week. So I hope you all had a great March break. Hope you all had a great weekend. It's 
beautiful now in Guelph. Uh, it should be a great week coming up for all of us. Take care.